Hello everyone and welcome to my Chimera State YouTube channel. After posting the comparison video between Cubase 11 Pro and Cubase 10.5 Pro, some of you asked me to do a follow-up video detailing other aspects between the two. And here it is. Thanks to everyone for giving my videos a thumbs up and for subscribing to this channel. I truly appreciate your support. I mentioned that I've been a loyal Cubase customer since version Cubase VST5, but looking back at the Cubase release timeline, I think my loyalty actually started with Cubase VST 3.5 back in 1997. Either or, a lot has changed ever since and Cubase is getting better and better. In the past, there were some upgrades I wasn't a big fan of, mostly due to performance issues, but one thing I can tell you for sure is that personally, I think the upgrade to Cubase 11 Pro is really worth the money this time. When installing Cubase 11, you need to download the Steinbeck Download Assistant. Unfortunately, you can select a full installation and have to install each component you are interested in individually. Another issue that happened on release day was that due to the high demand, Steinbeck servers couldn't handle all the incoming license activations. As I mentioned in my previous video, I was up all night and it wasn't until 3 a.m. in the morning when I got my license activated. Steinberg apologized via email to all the customers and promised to do things better next time. But that was the only issue I ran into so far. Overall, Cubis 11 Pro is very stable. I did not have any hiccups, freezes or performance issues yet. I loaded several Cubase 10.5 Pro projects and the audio performance meter shows me basically the same workload. Let's have a look at the user interface. Compared to Cubase 10.5 Pro, the user interface did not really change much. Some submenus look a little different and of course additional buttons have been added due to some brand new functions and features. But overall Cubase 11 Pro still looks and feels pretty much the same. So what is new? First of all Cubase 11 Pro comes with many new loop and sample packs. One of my favorite ones is called Plume and it is actually a vocal pack recorded by singer and songwriter Amy Kirkpatrick, who I had the chance to work with in the past. If you are curious about the song we wrote together, check out René Ablas and Chimera State featuring Amy Kirkpatrick on Spotify. The song is called Where Do We Go. Aside from the vocal pack, you will find many useful additions of a wide range of music genres such as analog techno, Rock Pop Toolbox Blockbuster Hip-Hop Vault
or the 80s synth pop pack Night Call, just to name a few. Personally, I prefer the sample packs from Sample Magic that are available on Splice over Steinbeck sample packs. But having them included for free is a good addition, especially for beginners. In combination with the updated sampler track in Cubase 11, you can twist and tweak loops and samples in creative ways. It is definitely one of my favorite new features that I will use a lot in my own music productions. To give you an example, I'll do a quick demonstration showing the versatility of this feature. All you have to do is add a sampler track and drag and drop a loop or sample file on the sampler control window. Afterwards, you can set the quality from standard to extreme or even vintage. The latter one gives you additional sound parameters to play with. Cubase 11 Pro automatically detects the tempo of your loop. By switching over to the Audio Warp section, you can synchronize your loop or sample to the tempo of your project session. Additionally, you can turn on legato mode, and if you switch to solo mode, you can even alter the format of the sample. In the slice menu, you can automatically slice up your loop or sample. Each slice will then be automatically laid out on your keyboard keys. This process is a real time saver and I find the sampler track even more intuitive to use the native instruments contact. It is very quick to create vocal chops and such. Feel drain, nothing's the same. Coming home to somewhere else. This 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 rain this 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 rain 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 with additional filter and amp section along with two LFOs you can even automate some sound parameters of your loops and samples This is 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 this is
Cubase 11 Pro also comes with a set of new plugins. First of all, a brand new imager that supports up to four bands and allows you to adjust not only the stereo width, but also the perceived stereo panorama. Usually I like to use Isotope's also 9 imager, but comparing both of them seems to result in a similar stereo image. So I would say the imager is a nice addition for everyone who doesn't own one yet. Another addition is the metering plugin Supervision. Every music producer I know is currently raving about it. I've been using Isotopes Inside 2 and I've yet to fully familiarize myself with Supervision, so I'll be holding off my final conclusion. My first impression is that Supervision looks very promising and comes with all the features and metering tools you will ever need. I also really like the responsive user interface that allows you to scale Supervision to the size you need it to be. That brings me to the next new plugin addition, Frequency 2. Frequency 2 supports up to 8 bands and has been updated by dynamic EQ functions that are helpful for anyone who doesn't own a dynamic multiband EQ yet. Personally, I use FabFilters Pro Q3 and I'm super satisfied with it. But for everyone new, Frequency 2 is a nice and very useful addition. Drifting moments blown in time Sorrows list but never shown When all is gone When all is gone This brings me to a plugin that I'm actually really looking forward to, Squasher. A multi-compressor effect that allows you to simultaneously apply upward expansion and downward compression. OTT by x Records is being used in so many electronic music productions and Squasher offers even more settings. It comes also with a separate sidechain section that allows for internal and external sidechaining settings. Thank you. 
Another addition is Spectral Layer 1, a visual audio editing tool similar to Isotope's RX. One thing I had to try out immediately though was extracting vocal files from recordings. A remixer stream since it basically gives you access to separated instrumental and vocal files. The results are not perfect and if you extract vocals you can still hear some frequencies of other instruments that are in the same frequency spectrum as the vocals but it is still astonishing what is possible with technology nowadays and Spectral Layer 1 adds definitely new layers of creativity. Don't disappear being alone We always find ways on our own Furthermore, Cubis 11 Pro comes with a new scale assistant that makes hitting the wrong notes basically impossible. You can set your song scale in the key editor and follow its lead, quantize a solo to the scale or play live in perfect tune. And you also can change the view so one can see only the notes of the set scale. And you can even let the scale assistant analyze your MIDI recording and suggest the right scale. Very helpful stuff indeed. Film music composers and sound designers will be looking forward to the new synchronizing features that allow for more precision. Also the score editor was enhanced with lots of improvements. This brings us to one of my personal highlights, the brand new export options. These are a real time saver. No matter if you need to bounce stems for remixes or your mastering engineer, try audio tracks for backing up a recording session or even groups, sense or tracks including all the applied effects. Cubase 11 Pro makes the whole procedure very intuitive and easy. That's it for my Cubase 11 Pro video. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Looking forward to seeing you next time. Have a great one.